How's it going everybody? This is Beat the Bushes, the FNIRSI portable soldering iron with a 100 watt AC adapter. At first I thought this is a self-contained soldering iron with a battery inside that will power itself, but no, you actually need the USB-C cable connected to an AC adapter or a power bank like this one. A 100 watt power adapter, but you need to plug this into the wall in order for it to work. On its own though, all the electronics, it's built in into the soldering iron. You just need the cable connected to the AC power adapter. I tested this with some through hole components as well as some really big connectors and it actually did quite well. When you combine it with a power bank, it's actually really quite powerful. Oftentimes I would work on something like an e-bike and in those cases, I have to lug a very heavy soldering iron with all the other equipment. It's just a big production to bring it all next to the e-bike because I can't bring the e-bike to my workbench. It's portable. You can bring it into a car and solder various items that's inside a car, or you can bring it into the attic where there is no power cables. With that said, let me go back and unbox this and show you what's included and also all the features that you can change on the LCD screen. QC card, charge plug, a small instruction sheet. Here it is in English if you're interested. And here's the soldering iron itself. Super compact and lightweight. And you can just open this up over here and you put the iron in this end, peel off the protective film, USB-C with this adapter cable and the other end is a barrel plug. It comes with a 100 watt gallium nitride AC power adapter. This is for Asian country. So let's just pull this off. The US plug is hidden underneath. Look at that. And now we can plug it in. So it comes with this long USB-C cable. Plug one end into the USB-C, the other end directly into the soldering iron. So it seems like we don't really need this DC power adapter here. Inside the case, there's one already and it also comes with five more. Soldering tip holder. So we can just open this up, pull out one of the soldering tips and we put it inside the soldering iron push it in all the way. There's a little piece of foam here for you to clean the solder tips. The HS02A-B version, I would consider this the standard tip. You have a more blunt tip down here. A very fine tip is the dash I. The dash JS is like a little curved tip. The dash K is a long blade. The dash KU is a short blade. We'll take a look at one of the tips. If you pull it out, you have two conductors here to send energy down to the tip. The outside is likely a shield. It doesn't conduct at all. So the current goes through these two points. But at the very tip, you can't actually unscrew anything. So this whole tip is one entire assembly and you have to buy the entire thing to replace it. Plug it in. It should activate it. There we go. Press OK. It's using 15 watts over here. The temperature is increasing to 350 C. It beeps after it's reached that temperature and now it's consuming about 12 watts or so. So we can increase the temperature over here, 355, 360. I'm gonna turn it off just to see what that looks like. Even though it's off, it's gonna be really hot at the tip over there still. So if I press it okay to turn it back on, it quickly reaches 365 degrees. We can go from 100 to 450 C or 180 to 842 F. The voltage is nine to 20 volts, but this USB-C AC adapter is giving 20 volts, as you can see in the bottom right corner here. Of course, in order to deliver 20 volts, this is a power delivery USB-C AC adapter, and it also uses up to 100 watts maximum. The screen is a 0.96 inch IPS high definition color screen. Not an OLED, but an IPS. While it's hot, we just set it onto the stand just like that. The iron is set at 350 degrees. We can see a hot spot around 315 degrees Fahrenheit. It may not be reading it properly because the material is a little bit shiny. Sort of towards the edges, you can see that it's hotter and at 315 degrees. If we kind of go down towards the body of the soldering iron, we see that's 115. It gets cooler towards the handle and the display area is around 80 degrees Fahrenheit. I brought all my soldering tools out. There's a magnetic extra helper hand thing to hold the circuit board and any other components. There's also an Edson FXF11 fuminator. It's quite expensive, but it works so well. There's like a little carbon filter here and you can see later on whenever the solder fumes comes up, it sucks it right up and the best part is, is because it's super quiet. See, if I turn it on, 
pretty low noise when you compare this to the other fume extractors the other ones are like really really noisy i'm okay with this one i have a bottle of water here you probably need this if you're gonna carry this soldering iron around because you want to put out the fire in this little sponge thing here because this thing is plastic i would be very careful in jamming my soldering iron in there to cool it down turn on this soldering iron put some solder on there is it hot enough there we go it does okay seems like you got to get it started with the base of the soldering tip here it's only at 350 there we go let's do the capacitor now there we go there we go i have some desoldering braid i've increased it to 390 i should work a little bit better let's say i want to unsolder this there we go remove the solder from this hole and also the other one. Oh yeah i'm gonna put that sponge on there to try to reduce the temperature i'm just sticking it in the water like this we can see that as it cools down the power level goes up to try to compensate and keep it at 400 degrees c so it's dropping down there to 300 c and then it beeps because it's reached 300 c if i press ok again it'll go to setting two this is 330 press ok again to setting three 360 it reaches it quite quickly. I'm going to turn it off for 10 seconds. 10 seconds has passed and turn it back on. It's reduced to around 278. So when you turn it off, this tip is going to remain hot for quite some time and you have to let it cool before you try to put everything away. And in its off state, you can press and hold it to enter the option menu, such as sleep set. We can set the duration at which you'll start sleeping, the standby time, the sleep temperature, where when it sleeps, it would drop down to 100 degrees C. Press the OK button to go back out to the menu. We go down to handle set, say OK. We got different preset temperatures, set OK, channel one, two, or three. We can set it to nine, 12, 15, or 20 volts. We can increase the power or decrease the power. Right now it's at 65. And also we can set the system where we can set the language, the hand mode, which is interesting. We can set it to left hand, say OK. And then everything's upside down. So you can flip it this way. So your menus will be facing towards you instead of upside down. I like it on the right side actually. So we'll sit to that side. And then there's also the units. So we can set it to Fahrenheit. Also the volume for if there's beeping or not. So we can turn that off right there. So it's off. And then the brightness of the screen. We'll like it on maximum brightness. There's an about page where it'll tell you the model of the soldering iron, the version of the firmware, and then there's also a factory reset option. So a lot of great features in there that you can customize. When you look at the entire soldering iron, there's just three buttons over here. The input port is a USB-C. In the back, there is nothing. It's just all smooth. And then there's the rubberized handle over here. Let's say we want to remove this cable, which is a bit more heavy duty. There's a lot more solder on here. Add just a tiny bit of solder on there to get it going. Start melting it a little bit so that there's more surface area right there. And you just kind of pull it right there. Or if you have the patience, you just kind of, kind of rock it in there. You just want to transfer heat and pull out that cable as soon as it's hot. There we go. Now we got it removed. Now this is kind of on fire and there's a lot of smoke coming out of here. We will put it out with this little sponge and water and now it's not smoking anymore. I'm going to touch that solder point again so we can see how much power it's using. Now it's starting to melt it now. You can see it's using only maybe like 20% of the power and it's still able to melt everything. For this connector, it's even bigger. So when we turn it on, you see when I switch it from mode one to mode three, it uses 100% of the power there just to get it to 680 degrees. And let's see when I touch the soldering tip on this big blob here, see what happens about 33% power going in. 
I think I might need a thicker tip in order to melt that thing easily. Even though if this is somewhat hot, it doesn't actually bottom out on this cap. So when you put it back on, it's just gonna stay really hot inside here and not touch this plastic ends. If you don't wanna wait, you gotta use a pair of pliers here. Carefully remove it, put it somewhere where it won't burn. And then we'll put in the other tip. Make sure it's fully seated, plug the power back in. And now it's gonna heat up to the top temperature again. Notice that it's using 100% power to get there and it's heating up very quickly. You know, just like a couple of seconds and it's already at temperature. Let's say I wanna remove this connector that's below here, this XT60 connector. So I gotta try to heat both sides and we can kind of monitor the power meter as well as I'm doing this. Oh, there we go. That's quite good actually. Usually I have trouble doing it with just one soldering iron and something of this size. Put out the fire again. I'm actually quite impressed with this thing that it can remove this big connector. As for storing it, I'm leaving one tip in there, put the screw cap on. It actually fits in two different ways. This is the correct way, but you can also fit it the wrong way like this where the logo is kind of on the back. And this is kind of like a triangular shape thing. So it only fits one way like that. Put it in here. Normally there's only two slots for soldering tips. You could very well just put two of them in here, but I rather just put the entire set, everything that you can. Here are the five tips, including one extra one. The case is empty, but whenever you replace it, you wanna put it back into the correct case so you don't get it all mixed up. The solder cleaning tip and the stand is right here in this pocket, and it does close. If you squeeze it quite a bit, it will all fit in there. But the only thing that's left here is you still need to carry around the AC adapter and also the charge cable and you're good to go right here. However, I would recommend you need other stuff such as uh, some pliers, some water for the soldering tip. You definitely want some fume extractor. You need your solder and possibly if you're doing stuff on the bench, you want the magnetic helping hands thing. You might not always have an AC plug. This is a 100 watt power delivery power bank. We'll see if this actually works with the soldering iron. Plug it back in, turn it on. Yep, turns on. And does it heat up? As long as it can supply 100 watts out of the power bank, it's going to work. So with this setup, you can be very portable about it. You can go into the field without needing some power source somewhere. You can work on a car and you don't have to lug a extension cable inside your car. Usually the cable of the soldering iron wand is heat resistant. This feels like it's silicone, so it should be heat resistant. I'm just gonna tap it a little bit. Seems to do okay. I mean, if it's regular plastic, it would have melted already. And there's no damage, it looks like. One, two, three, four, five. No damage. Try not to put the soldering iron there for too long. Definitely a lot more resistant than your regular USB-C cables. If you guys are interested in this soldering iron, check out my affiliate link down in the video description below. Thanks for watching this video. Until next time.